everyone, welcome back to the Brush by Brandy YouTube channel where we drop a new furniture painting tutorial every Friday. You guys can learn how to upgrade that furniture in your home um, to something that you really like and treasure and adore. Um, so the pieces we're going to be working on this week are these set of nightstands behind me. And I've had these in my inventory forever and I don't know why because they are the coolest pieces ever. Let me show you guys something. You guys see this? Look at that, how cute is that? They have a little magazine pullout on the back of the table. So these are a beautiful finish, but we're gonna take these from a dated oak finish, and by the end of this tutorial, we're gonna give them this beautiful gray finish with this weathered wood top, and you guys are gonna know how to duplicate this finish on your own pieces. So we're gonna be using some Dixie Bell paint, a blended finish. We're gonna be staining these wood tops with the mix of stains. Um, and it ends up being a beautiful finish. So I hope you guys stick around and enjoy this video. If you do, go ahead and click that subscribe button. Let's go ahead and get started. Here's where I'm starting out on these side tables. They're made of oak, kind of a dated finish. I can see why they're getting no love, but they're really cute, so we're gonna give them an upgrade. I put all my paint over a base of Dixie Belle Boss in gray. These little side tables had the cutest shape, good hardware, they had cute legs on them, and they even have magazine storage off the back that kind of opens up. They're really cool. I took the hardware off, cleaned them, and gave them a base of Dixie Belle Boss in gray. These are likely to be bleeders looking at the wood that's on them. Someone finally saw the beauty in this cute set and they snatched them up as a custom order. They want these in a blend of gray. The two colors I'm going to use is Dixie Belle Driftwood and Gravel Road. And I'm going to do a basic two color blend on these side tables. So let's go ahead and take a look at what that looks like. I'm doing two coats exactly the same, but this is my second coat here. And I'm going to go ahead and refine everything that I did on my first coat. The first thing I need to do is get my paint applied to my body. So I'm giving myself a nice coat of Dixie Belle Driftwood. I'm gonna make sure I keep it wet using my mister bottle. And then I'm gonna go ahead and apply my gravel road around the outside of the driftwood and start brushing them together around the edges. I want these colors to fade into each other so that you can't see the definition between them anymore. Um, I'm just gonna use my brush with barely any paint on it as a dry brush, and I'm gonna start working them together lightly. I'm using a pretty light hand for this step. I'm working my way around the four corners of this side, um, working small areas at a time. If you try to do large open spaces like this all at once, it gets a little overwhelming. And then I'm gonna go ahead and introduce my clean dry brush. This is my Dixie Belle Oval Medium, and that's where I really kind of refine the blend between the two colors. The Oval Medium acts like a feather duster, and it just kind of feathers away the, any brush strokes that are left between the two colors. If you're struggling with blending, I also recommend trying the Besting brush. It's a great way to get even blends. They're a lightly different look. They're gonna be a little bit more moody and cloudy, but it's a great way to get blends when you really struggle with blending. I also wanna say it's not uncommon to have to do a side a couple of times before you get it right. So what I usually do is I'll let it dry, take a look at it. If I'm still not happy with the look, I'll come back and just redo that one side. I also may end up going over the same areas a couple times before I'm really happy with it. You end up working your way around and might see spots you didn't see before. It also tends to look a little bit different as your paint is drying because you'll have spots that are still wet paint and some that are dry paint and it can cast shadows on your piece. So overall, my point is be patient with yourself. Um, a small piece like this is a great piece to practice on if you've not done blending before. Um, go ahead and pull out a small nightstand and give it a try. You can see the tops on these pieces here and I stripped these down using my surf prep sander and then I gave them a coat of no paint gel stain in weathered gray. Um, the weathered gray turned the oak into this nice soft gray color. I think it's a good complement for the bodies but it still gives it a natural wood look. Two blended coats, my weathered gray stain on top, and here these pieces are, they're ready for some detail work. 
I'm going to start by warming them up with some besting wax in brown and I'm applying this over my raw paint. I'm starting to get more and more comfortable with working with waxes over raw paint and I actually kind of like the look. It gives the waxes this more saturated look but you have to be careful putting it over raw paint because it does give you less control wiping it back. So just be sure you're comfortable with that. If you're not, go ahead and throw a clear coat on before you start this step. I tip my pieces up onto their back legs and this just gives me a better view. And then I'm gonna go ahead and use a small natural bristle artist brush and I'm just gonna outline some of the frames on this piece um, in my besting wax in brown. I chose brown because I wanted a little bit of contrast against the cool gray tones and the brown is nice and warm. It's gonna give me a little bit of a different feel than say a black or gray wax would on this. Once I have that outline of the wax, I'm just going to take a wider bristle brush and I'm going to kind of smear those waxes out and then buff away the excess. This gives me this nice soft ethereal effect with the waxes. When I'm detailing with waxes, I usually choose areas on the piece that I want to emphasize. So this would be either moldings or in this case, this frame detail on the front. I also might choose to put them anywhere that they might have gotten dirty from you so it looks a little bit aged and I choose places that your fingers would hit naturally. I'm gonna detail these pieces out using gilding wax in bronze. And I chose bronze for these because I wanna leave the hardware in their original color, which is a nice bronze color. The bronze is actually a perfect complement to the gray paint finish with the brown waxes. It really ties in well. Once my wax detailing on these is all complete, these pieces are finished and I went ahead and sprayed these bodies in flat clear coat. I chose flat because I love the low matte sheen of it and then I just went ahead and rolled on some gator hide to the tops using a flocked roller. I chose gator hide for the top so that they're the most durable parts of these pieces. They'll get the most use. These are side tables where people are likely to set their drinks and things. With clear coat on, I went ahead and oiled the insides using Big Mama's Butter and Orange Grove. I applied my original hardware after I cleaned them and these are done and they're adorable. Guys, I'm super excited with how these turned out. Um, I can't believe they sat in my inventory for so long. So um, if you enjoyed this video, I hope you'll click the subscribe button. You can find a link for everything I used in the description for this post. You can find more Brush by Brandy on Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, YouTube, and on my website at brushbybrandy.com.